Hi, this is Stephanie Johnston with the Johnston team of Service First Mortgage. And today I wanted to share some information with you on how interest rates work and uh, what factors play into what rate that you obtain, as well as a little bit about how the market plays into what rate you're going to end up obtaining on your home. So of course, um, one of the goals with our new home purchase and our structure for you is to make sure that we can work on getting you the best rate for your new home purchase. So here is a list of some examples of things that are going to affect your given rate. A lot of times that, um, you know, when people look online, they say, okay, what's your rate? Because their rate is this. Well, know that any online rate quote is going to be putting their best foot forward to try to get you to call. So all of these things on this list are going to make your rate higher or lower. The online quotes are going to take the absolute best of the best, the best situation, give you a quote based on that not super realistic necessarily because we want to give you what your rate quote is today and then monitor that with the market so that's how when someone says what is your rate we're going to say i need a little bit more information we'd love to give you a rate quote but we need to know a little bit about you so that we can determine what your interest rate is so some things on this list loan amount so if you borrow more or less on your loan that actually changes what rate you you do obtain Sometimes the smaller the rate, or the smaller the loan, excuse me, the higher the rate. So there's certain breaks that we look at that we might suggest actually putting a little less down if it's just a couple thousand, if there's a break near you to get a better rate um, and show you what that number would look like. The next loan is going to be product. So are you doing an FHA, a VA, a conventional, a USDA? They all have different rates, so they're all going to be different from day to day. Loan term, so this means 30 year, 15 year, 20 year. Generally speaking, the shorter the term loan I take, the better the rate is. Um, but of course, the higher the payment is. So we kind of compare and, and uh, see what's best for you. If it's fixed or an arm, so some of those online rates are teasers where they'll give you an arm that's only fixed for five years. Generally, those are gonna be lower, but if you're gonna live in the house 20 or 30 years, you would not wanna take you know a rate that's gonna change, especially in a rising rate environment. Purchase and refinance rates are different. If you're taking cash out or you're not when you do a refinance, also different. Another big one that a lot of people don't realize is occupancy. If you're going to buy a home as an investment home, rates are typically higher than if you buy it to live in as a primary residence. Also, that CLTV means combined loan to value, meaning how much you put down on the loan or in a refinance, how much equity you have. That plays into a factor. Um, also, property type. So if you buy a condo versus a multifamily versus a single family, all different interest rates. So if you change property types, it's something we'd want to know. Um, down here, location, of course, one of these other big ones is going to be credit score. So as your loan changes um, or score changes every 20 points, so set 620, 640, 660, all the way up to about 760, your interest rate and potentially your mortgage insurance are going to be different. That's one thing we always advise on credit planning and letting us help you to get the best score to, of course, yield getting the best start interest rate for your loan. And if you go down the list, there's lots of other items that kind of play into a factor. Those are the big ones. Another one to kind of touch on how many houses that you own, the number of financed properties affects your loan uh, rates, as well as if you escrow or not. So if you set up a tax and insurance account, generally your rate's going to be a little bit lower than if you don't. So we'll give you kind of pros and cons to, to both of these. So of course, the takeaway here is there is no one rate of today. There's lots of rates today. If one rate goes up or down, you know, generally they all move together, but your start rate, of course, is gonna be different for your personal situation. So that's where we wanna tailor our rate quote to you. And so um, just wanna make sure that understanding those impacts, to, of course, maximize what rate you get. Next portion here to, to kind of consider is um, when and why do rates change? So I'm gonna move myself down here a little bit so we can read up at the top. So this is mortgage-backed securities type of asset that is secured by a mortgage, collection of mortgages. So mortgages are sold in the secondary market, kind of in Wall Street land, we like to say, and they're pooled together. So mortgage-backed securities are gonna play into a factor with supply, demand, the marketplace, with what rates are. The big thing to note about mortgage-backed securities is the higher the number is, the lower rates are. And the lower the number is, the higher rates are. So it's opposite when you look at the charts. So if you say, oh, wait, they're down really, really low here, that's actually not a good thing. It's opposite. 
this is the thing that we see move just as quickly as the stock market does. So it's timing to make sure that we give you the best advice on when to lock your rate. Um, but knowing that there is market fluctuation, and yes, we wish we bought that um, Facebook stock and that Google stock years ago. We probably didn't, but we wish we did. Um, but it's again, timing is really important when you do get a loan. And on a purchase loan, you can lock in as soon as you did a, do get a purchase contract. Because until that point, we don't know how long your lock is going to be for, your property address, how much money you need. So all those things in the screen before, we don't know those until you have a contract so the investor can't price us and give us this day's rate. One other quick thing to touch on on that is the longer we lock in a rate, the more expensive it is. So you can lock your rate, say, for six months or four months or three months. That costs more than for 30 days. So when we look at new builds or planning for in the future, that's one other thing that we consider in terms of the interest rate itself. So the next point here, let's see um, if you can read the top of this here, is, is basically what are points? What does this have to do with my loan? So I bring this up as just kind of some examples with the more you pay a lender, the lower the rate is. So I can call or the lender can call a fee anything, but the more in lender fees you pay, the lower the rate. The higher the rate, the less in fees. So not always does the best rate, the lowest rate, make the most sense for you. We look at the payment difference between X rate and Y rate, the cost difference, and what is the recovery point. So if you spent $2,000 to save 50 per month, well, if that makes sense or not, is really going to depend on how long you own the home, how much money you have to work with today, and what else would you do with that money if you didn't put it into the um, discount points. So again, that's another tool that when we look online, a lot of the time um, you hear advertisements from anything to a no-cost loan, so a loan that the lender pays cost, that's an option with all lenders. We can do that as well if it makes sense for you to no points, meaning where we don't charge you any points or we don't charge you any extra fees, but you pay your standard closing cost, or maybe you buy one point or two points. Um, one person I like to point out that does this all the time with their online rate quotes is um, Quicken. Quotes usually 25% down, a perfect credit score, and at least two to three discount points with their online quotes. So their rates look great when you see that TV commercial, but then you read the fine print and you say, oh wait, that's a lot in cost. So that's something, again, fine print, always read, and we'll compare, contrast when we work up your loan scenario. So this will be something we go through y'all with y'all. The next piece that I wanted to kind of touch on here, move this up again, is this crazy chart. So this is mortgage-backed security. So the, the screen we were back on a couple of pages ago. And I bring this up to show you what we watch every day. So again, the higher that number is, the better rates are. The lower it is, the higher rates are going to get. So, you know, right now, this happens to be January 29th right now of, of 2018. But just as an example, we've started to see some rate increases. There's a lot going on in the marketplace that are going to indicate that, but that's what's happened recently. If we scroll back out to maximum, we are pretty much at, at one of the highs that we've seen over the last couple of years. That big drop down is the day after the election. So just unforeseen information. One other thing to remember on the markets is everything's based on predictions. So while one, one outcome was expected with the election, there was another outcome that happened. So it doesn't mean that that's the reason rates went up, it's more they went in the opposite direction because the market moved one way thinking X is going to happen and Y happened. So if something unexpected happens in the marketplace, that can make rates go up or down quickly. Um, if, again, the stock market is up you know, in one direction or another, that can happen. We watch other indicators such as the um, federal fund rates, what's happening on with the, the government and them raising rates and a lot of other back-end news. So the big thing to remember on here is this is a lot of change, and we just want to make sure you know that this is happening in the back-end. We keep you updated on what's going on, but again, that's something to consider that they are just, you know, we are having a lot more volatility now than, than we have in the past. That doesn't mean that that happens all of the time. So 
again, I hope this information was helpful to help you, you see how the markets kind of play into a factor with what's going on here, give you some more information of how rates are determined. And again, the best takeaway on here is let us help you out with this purchase. This is what we do every day. Let us give you the best rate and the best situation for your home purchase, as well as watch the market and give you advice as to when to lock, to float, et cetera. Because again, you can lock in when you get a purchase contract, we can also wait a little bit all the way up until closing to secure your rate. So again, hopefully this is helpful. Again, it's Stephanie Johnston with the Johnston team of Service First Mortgage. And my contact information will be next. And let us know how we can assist. Thanks. Bye.